Hello, this is Michael Tracy, and this video is about statements made by George Mallory about possible routes to the summit of Mount Everest. If you are new to this channel, it may come as a surprise that George Mallory stated exactly how he intended to climb the mountain, and it was not by climbing the second step. In all of Mallory's numerous talks, letters, and notes about climbing Mount Everest, he never once mentions the second step. George Mallory spent a great deal of time thinking about how to climb Mount Everest. He came up with a detailed plan for which routes to take depending on various weather conditions, and he was last seen climbing one of those routes by Noel O'Dell at 1250 on June 8, 1924. Mallory's planning started back in 1921 with his first trip to Mount Everest as part of the reconnaissance party. This photo was taken by Mallory himself in 1921 and I'll mark the two routes he would later describe as his preferred routes. The first I will call the Kulwar because it crosses into the Great Kulwar and exits the small gully on the other side before heading up across the rock band on the summit pyramid. The second route I refer to as the zigzag route and its crux is just to the east of the Great Kulwar and passes across the top of it to reach the base of the third step before heading up the skyline. The popularized theory that Mallory and Irvin attempted to climb the second step is contradicted by Mallory's statements that the ridge route was impossible and that he would not attempt any difficult obstacles because even if he could climb them, they would leave him too exhausted to make the summit. Mallory's statements are consistent beginning in 1921 and continuing up to his final letter written the day before he and Irvin went missing. Mallory first did a reconnaissance on Everest in 1921, in which they approached from the south, where they were able to take this photo. They then traversed across and up to the North Pole, where Mallory took this picture. Having seen the mountain from both sides and having time to evaluate potential routes, Mallory would later write in a postcard to a fan that it was during the 1921 expedition that they determined that the Northeast Ridge route was impossible. Mallory also wrote that the ridge route was not possible in the 1921 expedition report and noted that the key to the climb will depend upon the possibility of escaping from the crest to avoid the obstacles. In his 1921 assessment, the only difficult obstacle he mentions is what will later be referred to as the citadel, which is the final rock step along the summit ridge. In the 1921 expedition report, Mallory goes on to describe why the ridge route would not work that the crest of the ridge would be too confining and not give enough options, that any obstacle would disrupt the steady breathing required at high altitude, and given the number of such obstacles along the ridge, time alone ruled out such a route. However, in 1921, he had not yet worked out the exact route to the summit, as he clearly states. Thus, his intent was never to simply climb up the crest of the ridge. In 1922, Mallory returned to Everest, where his high point was recorded by Howard Somerville in this photo. Mallory commented on this photo and described how he would not take the ridge route nor attempt any difficult obstacles on the ridge. His reasoning in 1922 was substantially similar as his reasoning in 1921, that although he might be able to scale such obstacles, they would leave him too winded and simply take too much time to reach the summit. In 1923, Mallory wrote the postcard to Elizabeth Holmes indicating that the Northeast Ridge route was impossible. And in 1924, Mallory told John Knoll, the expedition photographer, exactly what routes he intended to climb so that Knoll could position his camera appropriately. Here is what John Knoll wrote. Mallory told me himself when he talked to me of his possible routes up the final pyramid and told me where to watch for him that he expected to go up the northeast of the final pyramid, but if he found the gully particularly difficult or if the west wind were particularly bad, he would take the eastern ridge, missing the gully by passing across the head of it and gaining better protection from the west wind. As a note, at that time the exact orientation of the ridges was incorrect and thus the eastern ridge is really the northeast ridge and the northeast of the pyramid is the north face. And while there is a theory that Mallory suddenly changed his mind about all of this based on a conversation with Norton on June 4th, this is contradicted by Mallory's final note written to John Knoll on June 7th stating, We'll probably start early tomorrow, the 8th, in order to have clear weather. It won't be too early to start looking out for us either crossing the neck band under the pyramid or going up skyline at 8 p.m. John Knoll stated that the 8 p.m. really meant 8 a.m. The typical transcription of that note has them crossing the rock band under the pyramid. However, a viewer pointed out that it might indeed be neck band, and having been to the archives and seen numerous handwritten notes by George Mallory, the transcription matches the way he would have written neck band and not rock band. While it does not make much difference, and the neck band is clearly the rock band under the summit pyramid, it does appear that Mallory referred to it as the neck band. Another theory has Mallory taking a sleeping bag on his final summit push, but this is contradicted by Mallory's letter from June 6, stating he intended to return to North Cole by nightfall, and thus would have no need to carry any sleeping bags. 
Thus, Mallory wrote that the ridge route was impossible in 1921, 1922, and 1923. In 1924, he stated two potential routes he would climb depending on the level of wind, neither of which involved climbing the second step. His final note, written the night before his climb, confirmed these two options, and Odell's sighting places him at the top of the zigzag route at 12.50 p.m., exactly where he would have been had he started from high camp at approximately 5.30 a.m. And while I have talked extensively about Mallory's statements about the route, Andrew Irvin commented just once about the route in a letter to a friend. From base camp, Irvin wrote, Mallory and I are to make the first oxygen attempt on the same day from Camp 6 at 26,800 feet. The idea is for them to leave the North Coal the day before Mallory and I and spend one night at Camp 5, 25,000 feet, and another at 27,700, while we spend only one night at 26,800. The mountain looks wonderfully easy from here in the evening light. At this point, Mallory clearly discussed the plan with Irvin, and while Irvin does not state the exact route, he does note that it looks wonderfully easy. Under no set of circumstances does climbing the second step look easy. Even from base camp, it looks difficult. However, the same cannot be said about the zigzag. This is a photo I took from North Coal, and it looks like you can walk right up the zigzag. And while you are climbing up the North Ridge, for most places, it looks like you can do the same. That is, just walk right up. However, it is not as easy as this photo makes it seem. But for Mallory looking for possible routes at North Coal using binoculars, it would have looked substantially similar to this photo. In contrast, absolutely nothing about the second step ever looks easy. It looks difficult from base camp, it looks difficult from North Coal, and when you are right next to it, it looks difficult. The main difficulty with climbing the zigzag route is not the terrain, but the impossibility of getting a permit to climb it. And while some viewers say, why don't you just go stealth and climb it yourself and post a video? First, I am not such a young man anymore. Second, this expresses an incredible naivete about how the Chinese control that mountain. While I might be able to climb the route, as soon as I posted the video or even just publicly stated that I had climbed it, my Sherpas would be banned from climbing and the expedition operator would be banned from operating anywhere in China. Thus, no ethical climber would subject their Sher Sherpas to such treatment, and it is not possible to climb the mountain these days without Sherpa support, another requirement from the Chinese, you know, for safety. Ultimately, there is no mystery about what George Mallory stated numerous times about potential routes to the summit. The only mystery is why people are still talking about the second step, and why one commentator cannot even say the phrase zigzag, nor acknowledge that both Mallory and Norton specifically mentioned this route east of the Coolwar. Cool